Coming to you from Whidbey Island, Washington, this is Diane Wisga. Years ago, I organized a storytelling troupe. We called ourselves Story Works, W E R X, and we performed stories for audiences all over Orange County. One of my favorite times of telling stories was at the Christmas season, and I'd like to tell a story to you that is one of my favorites for all time. So if you're snuggled into your favorite chair and ready, here we go. All the Who's down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now, don't ask me why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right, it could be his shoes were a little too tight, but I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, the Grinch stood there Christmas Eve, hating the Who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, Grinchy frown at the warm, lighted windows below in the town, for he knew every Who down in Whoville beneath was busy hanging a mistletoe wreath and they're hanging their stockings. He snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. It's practically here. Then he growled, with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow, he knew that the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys, and then... Oh, the noise, the noise, 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 noise. That was one thing he hated. All the noise, 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 noise. Then the Who's, young and old, would sit down for a feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They'd feast on Who Pudding and Rare Who Roast Beast, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they'd do something he liked least of all. All the Who's down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand, and the Who's would start singing. And they'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 and the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I've put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea. An awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what I'll do. <laughs> the Grinch laughed in his throat, and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. He chuckled and clucked. What a great Grinchy trick. <laughs> With this coat and this hat, I'll look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer. And the Grinch looked around. But since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max, and he took some red thread, and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh and hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, Giddy up and the sleigh started down toward the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. All their windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air, all the Who's were all dreaming sweet dreams without care when he came to the first little house on the square. This is stop number one, <laughs> the old Grinchy Claws hissed, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. He slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but 
If Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once, for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue where the little who stockings hung all in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk, with a smile most unpleasant, around the whole room, and he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn, and plums. He stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch, very nimbly, stuffed all the bags, one by one, up the chimney. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the Who's Feast. He took the Who Pudding. He took the Roast Beast. He cleaned out that icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee, and now, <laughs> grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree, and he started to shove when he heard a small sound, like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was no more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter who got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there and I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. And he patted her head and he got her a drink and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuck the tree up. The last thing he took was the log for their fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls, he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other whose houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other whose mouses. It was quarter past dawn. All the Who's still in bed. All the Who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled. Packed it up with their presents. The ribbons, the wrappings, the tags and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. Three thousand feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. <laughs> Poo, poo, to the hose, he said, grinchishly humming. They're finding out that no Christmas is coming. Hmm. They're just waking up, I know what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a moment or two. Then the hoos down in Whoville will all cry. <laughs> boo, hoo. That's a noise, hmm, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. And he paused and put a hand to his ear, and he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started out low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. The sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry. Very. He stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes, then he shook. What he got was a shocking surprise. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. 
He puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. <laughs> and what happened then? Well, down in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he rode with his load through the bright morning light. He brought back their presents. He brought back their feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. From my home here on Whidbey Island, Washington, to you, wherever you are living and listening, I wish you a happy Christmas, a happy, exponentially prosperous and healthy new year, and a chance for each and every heart to grow three times their size.